Hello everyone, and welcome to my news digest, which I'd like to start with a piece of news related to the Ton network. Now the USDT stablecoin from Tether will also be compatible with the Ton blockchain network. Statistics released on the Tether website's homepage report liquidity of $10 million. Back in early April, rumors began circulating about the launch of a stablecoin on Ton. At that time, there was speculation that Pavel Durov and Tether's CEO, Paolo Arduino, would jointly present at the Token 2049 conference. And that's exactly what happened. An unfortunate incident occurred with the Hedgy Finance Protocol, which was subjected to a cyber attack by unknown individuals. Financial losses amounted to around $45 million. Cybersecurity experts from Cybers were the first to respond to the disruptions. The team attempted to contact Hedgy employees, but to no avail. During this time, the perpetrators managed to steal a large portion of the previously mentioned sum. The hackers exploited a vulnerability in the Create Locked Campaign protocol function using flash loans, which have recently become a common cause of system breaches. I believe there are other, more secure ways to earn money. If you're looking for a service to purchase high-quality and affordable proxies for running multi-account farms, ProxyLine is an excellent option. ProxyLine is one of those proxy servers that can offer IP addresses from more than 150 countries, including at competitive prices. You can even make wholesale proxy orders, and in addition, receive discounts for purchasing a large number of proxies. It's worth noting that ProxyLine's high speed and stability distinguish it from other platforms. 24-7 support will always assist you and answer any questions related to proxy placement on your accounts. ProxyLine guarantees refunds and replacement of any proxies if they don't switch you with support from the platform. So if the service has truly piqued your interest, I'll leave a link to it in the description below this video. Be sure to check it out and purchase quality proxies at a profit for yourself. As for other news, some altcoins are gaining momentum in the market. The Blastup presale raised $4.7 million in just a few weeks, attracting increasing attention from the community to the coin. Aptos, on the other hand, saw its coin price drop by almost 26% in the last week. However, Aptos had shown an 80% growth over the past six months. Currently, the current price fluctuates between 651 and 13.5. Avalanche also saw a price drop of 28.19% in a week, but its growth over six months was 267%. At the moment, AVAX is undergoing a correction due to its significant growth. But as you know, downturns often indicate potential future growth. Regarding the price of the Celestia coin, it also fell by 16.60% last week. Considering forecasts, the cryptocurrency has both potential for growth and decline amid the pullback. The next piece of news again relates to Tether, but this time it's about its reorganization. The company announced the creation of new business divisions. There are now divisions whose activities go beyond stablecoins. Tether data deals with the implementation of new technologies. Tether Finance is responsible for financial solutions and tokenization. Tether Power is engaged in mining development. And Tether Edu is focused on the company's educational initiative. Tether representatives have stated their plans, aiming to become one of the leading Bitcoin miners in the world. In March, the company announced its intentions to promote the development of artificial intelligence activities. The five-day outflow of funds from Grayscale ahead of the halving continues. Data collected by SoSo Value showed an outflow of $1.6 billion since trading opened in January. Overall, for all 10-spot Bitcoin ETFs, the outflow amounted to $4.3 million as Fidelity and BlackRock received compensation through liquidations of some GBTC. Fidelity's net inflow amounted to $37.3 million, exceeding BlackRock's $18.7 million. BlackRock was surpassed by a competitor in net fund inflow in the spot market for the first time. The final news concerns Binance CEO Chang Peng Zhao. He Yi, co-founder of Binance, expresses confidence in the situation regarding Chang Peng Zhao's sentencing. In the report, the co-founder clarified that pressure from regulatory bodies was anticipated within the company. According to He Yi, the situation itself turned out to be the most optimal, considering the circumstances. Just a couple of days before Zhao confessed his guilt, a statement of confidence in the co-founder was already signed. According to the law, a judge may sentence Zhao to a long prison term of up to 10 years. But perhaps the former CEO will still manage to emerge from this situation unscathed, avoiding imprisonment. 
What are your thoughts on this matter? Write your thoughts in the comments. And also be sure to share which of the news you liked or disliked the most and why. Well, as always, thank you for your attention and I bid you farewell until next time. Have a great day and bye-bye.